Thank you so much for dropping by. So this is gonna serve as the official first video for Stardew Valley. Um, I've actually gone and saved up. So this is my first playthrough. But we're gonna go through the second playthrough as Delta. And I actually started so a little bit because the first couple of days was just introductions we're introducing yourself to the townspeople so I thought we go ahead and get started on day three and officially start farming our farm and I've already had some plants there's some parsnips some potatoes oh and I have a couple of geodes so I gotta go to cleanse and to go Get the geodes cracked. So yeah, as you can see, I've previously played through at least once. The first playthrough was not to 100% completion, so I'm hoping to get that via this playthrough. Just because it's a little early. That's why I'm just gonna clear up the farm a little bit. And so yeah, so I, so what I did is that I remixed the bundles, so they're gonna be pretty much... I have no idea what the remix bundle is gonna look like. And then I remixed up the rewards for the cave as well. So the mine, sorry, the mine rewards are also remixed. So yeah, so we're just gonna see what we get this time around. Ah. So I tried really hard. Well, initially I wanted to have like pink overalls, but I couldn't match my pink. I couldn't match. For some reason, I couldn't. I couldn't find. Or at least I couldn't figure out how to get the pink and the pants to match. So I figured I'll just do try to match the shirt as best as I can. It's not a hundred percent, which is bothering me a little bit, but it's not a big deal. So I'm just cleaning the farm doing much oh that's yeah, almost so pretty much we can head over to cleanse after I put all stuff away so this is the Riverland farm so previously the first playthrough I played via the So the first playthrough I played using the forest farm. So I thought I wanted to do the beach farm because it looks so nice, but the sprinklers they don't work on the beach farm, which is I mean, without the sprinklers. Oh gosh, I don't think I can get you. I can't even go in the mines. Um Yeah, if the sprinklers, if without the sprinklers, it'll make your life a lot harder later on. So I thought I'd opt for the Riverland farm, where there's lots of water, so lots of fishing. Oh, Penny! I'm gonna go talk to Penny. Just wanted a quiet moment. Oh, does she want to talk? Actually, oh, okay. Um, And the river farm right now also looks amazing. So I'm gonna process my chill. So I previously married Penny before. Oh, those are all things I can give in the library. Previously married Penny, previously married Harvey, and I chose them because they're the two people that seem to have good jobs. Oh, abysmal. Not a single piece in this entire collection. Well, I just found something for you. What's this? You found something! Let me see it. Ooh. I don't even know what I found. <laughs> Remarkable. It's very old. I love to study this in great, greater detail, but it is yours. Hmm, I've got a favor to ask you. 
Would you consider donating any new artifacts or minerals that you find? We can make a groundbreaking discovery together. Oh, and who knows? If you keep donating, I might come across some interesting items to send your way. Ooh, I will. What do you think about it? If you decide to donate, just bring the objects to the front desk. Okay. Let me just bring the objects to the front desk now. <laughs> Donate to the museum. Would, oh. Hmm. Should I put it? We can always rearrange later, I guess. So. Oh, it's just a perfect. Archaeology done. Oh, I got more money. I'm excited. Still need to harvest a parsnip. Oh, and it's Wednesday, so. Here's general store is not open, so I'm gonna go get more seeds from Jojo, which is a company that I quit from before I moved to the farm. Oh, okay. Good. Oh, let's get some bean starters actually. Bean starters. More potatoes? Okay, let's get more bean starters. Because I know they keep growing, so I'm gonna go plant my beans right now and then maybe do some fishing. So my farm is called Gemington Farms, and I really wish I had a giant sign that says that. Um, because my cat's name is Jam. And I love my cat, so okay. Oh, let's forget. Okay, now we gotta plant the beans in a smart way so we can actually moderate. I guess it's okay if I plant it like this. <clears throat> okay, I can make two field stones. Yay! <laughs> I'll eat it later. Oh. Okay. Do you want to make some of those too? But I'm gonna go see if I can fish by the ocean for a bit. Okay. I mean, my farm is a huge pack. Dried starfish. And uh, you found an artifact, the curator of the local museum. I want to know about this. Yes, okay, I will give it to him later. <laughs> Ooh! Um, yes. Oh, wow. Ice bash. The ocean is best enjoyed alone, don't you think? Okay, bye. <laughs> You want to be alone so badly, but it's like it's in. You're in the rain. Wouldn't you want an umbrella? I guess not. See, the first time I played through, I didn't actually realize Sebastian was um was a programmer or something. Until much later on, until I started to be friends with people. Because <laughs> I didn't actually understand how friendships were. Living in it? I mean, eventually I will be friends with everyone again. Ah! Okay, 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 this takes too much concentration. There we go. I really enjoy my first playthrough and I can't wait until the new game comes out. Haunted Chocolate Tear? I think that's what it's called. The um, new game for Pixar Day. I think it's gonna be amazing. Oh, see. Oh, it's logged. Oh my goodness. 
Hi, Willie. I guess I'll talk to you. Boy, there. It's nice to see young folk moving into the valley. It's not very common these days. I mean, I'm glad you consider me young. <laughs> I guess I can go eat the field snack. So, I've, I think I've already decided that I wanted to marry Shane. Mostly because I felt bad. I mean, once I complete the community center, Shane's gonna lose his job. And I really think that's what sets him to go into a downward spiral so I wanted to marry Shane this time around so I could essentially you know help him turn his life around <laughs> but then I realized Sam also worked at the um, at the at the Jojo Mart too um yeah Sam also worked at the Jojo Mart but a little bit with Sam, his life, apparently. I mean, he has his band, so his life is 100% ruined by me closing the Jojo Mart when I complete the uh, community center. I just, just want to explore the mm -hmm. So nice. Okay, I guess the one thing about the, uh, the, Riverland Park compared to the Forest Park. The difference that I've noticed is that, yeah, there's not a lot of land space, which makes sense obviously because it's the River Farm. Riverland Farm. Um, can I just fish? I'll just fish near my home so I don't get exhausted and get trapped. And then Harvey's gonna charge me like a thousand gold to just wake up from fainting, I guess. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of land space, which might impede in the future if I want to put like a lot of sheds in, but I think you'll be okay. Oh, also really, I really, I mean, I didn't want um, to marry Shane because he's going to have blue chickens. I know, I'm already spoiling a lot of this stuff. I played it through before and I already know most of it. Um, still have some time to finish. Yeah. But I do just want to try I wanted to try the remix bundle just to up the difficulty a little bit this time around. And that's why I'm doing it again and sharing it with you. Also because I am also waiting for the <laughs> new game to come out. Oh, I caught a. That's a. That's a rainfish. Green is rainy, right? Yeah. And the new things I'm excited for. I'm trying to think. Oh, the new season of Futurama. That's right. Yeah. So. Loved Futurama when I was a kid. Oh, new record. Okay. I don't have enough space now. Um, yeah, I love Future Mouse Kid. It was actually it was actually how I learned to speak English when I was a child. When I first came to Canada around when I was 10-ish. And um pretty much obviously like my mom put me through like school. We did learn English a little bit, but I learned nothing in school because I'm just that type of student. Um level one fishing game. Perfect. And yeah, but coming to Canada, where you know it actually really mattered that I needed to learn to speak English, I pretty much learned just by watching like Family Guy and Futurama. And I do love Futurama more than them, for sure. <gasps> no! Oh my God, the crow! Oh my God, can I? Make a scarecrow? Oh, oh my god, that is so upsetting. No, there's one missing. I'm gonna have to, and even if I go get another crop, it's gonna be like it's gonna grow at a different speed than everything else. Oh my god, 
crows. Oh my god, we have so many crows here. I used to get, um, when I used to have like, well not black hair because I really dislike having black hair, but I had um, really dark, like brown, I dyed my hair like a, a darker, not necessarily auburn, but yeah, a brownish red color. Um, and I used to get attacked by crows all the time during like the mating season or like the nesting season or whatever all the time and it was <laughs> and that's not necessarily why i decided to dye my hair but definitely when after i dyed it it helped crows stopped attacking me like it's honestly the crows here are vicious and then my cat like jeff loves them oh i just noticed warning um my cat Jen <laughs> loves spying on the crows from the windows. Obviously, she, we don't let her go outside because, I mean, she's an indoor cat. Outdoor cats, cats being outdoors can be really problematic because we actually lost our first family cat um, because he was an outdoor cat and he actually got run over right outside the door and it was really, really, really sad. And I mean, it was really, really traumatic. Because, like, in order to identify, it was so weird. I guess, I think in Ontario, you didn't have to microchip cats. So we, because I'm originally from Ontario, and now I'm in BC, British Columbia, BC. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Do that again. Um, in Ontario, you did have to microchip cats. So my parents didn't microchip our first family cat. And, um, where should I put it? Put it here. And so in order to identify the cat, they actually sent my mom a box of his remains. And the cat was just like so mangled because of it. Um, okay, I'll actually go to Pierre's again and you see it to replace the one that I lost. Oh, so mad. Anyway, but now in British Columbia, where they can do microchip cats. So Jen has a microchip. So even if we lose her, we'll be able to identify her. What should I do? I mean, I could do a flower. It has to get a flower. Oh, kale! Oh, I didn't even see that. I'll play the kale. Ugh, <laughs> it's that lone spot. So anyway, regardless, but still, I don't want to let my cat outside because bad things can happen to cats outside. Plus she doesn't want to go outside. Like right now where we live, there's a patio. She doesn't even want to go on the patio. So I don't think she actually wants to go outside. So <laughs> that'd be lots of good for me to see that's Before the crows ate my crop, and that was a potato, I clearly remember that. Well, I kept the leaf because I wanted to make a um, spring seed thing. So I guess we can go over here, well, forage in the forest side a little bit, and then do some fishing in the lakes and rivers there. Um, yeah. And but anyway, before I was saying, yeah, Future Animals was such an amazing show. And yeah, they just got renewed for a new season. I forget what the network is. Is it Hulu or something? I think so, I can't But it's gonna be good. And it's not just that, it's like... It's so funny because everybody likes to think that they... Or I think it's funny because everybody... A lot of people, not everybody, thinks that the... Um, the memorial is really a show. But future people. Some of the jokes are so smart. Because <laughs> I, I 
yeah, I just saw. This was um, a couple of weeks ago. There was a Reddit post asking people like, what are some of their favorite um, jokes from Futurama? And honestly, a lot of people said the um, a lot of people said were commenting on jokes from the the um, underwater. I, I don't know what it's called. I can't remember what the episode is called. The underwater Atlantis season. And it was oh no. I want to pick up that horse radish because I'm going to make a spring. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, the spring seed bundle. I guess I have no use for clay for now. Oh, there's no horse radish. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the underwater mermaid Atlanta season, which is amazing. <laughs> my favorite joke. From that episode, or actually maybe my favorite joke of all time, Futurama was like, so when the spaceship is going underwater, and then because of the so much because of the pressure, <laughs> and they are worried about, um, and they were the crew, they were worried about the pressure being too much, and then Leela asked the professor, so how much pressure can the ship withstand? And the professor goes, well, it's a spaceship, so anywhere between zero and one, which makes 100% sense. And I think like a lot of times when I was a kid, those jokes went, uh, I don't even need one, right? Go, like a lot of those jokes go over my head. Daffodil and dandelion, daffodil and dandelion, okay. Um, but rewatching it as an adult, I just thought it was so funny. And what's even funnier? was like, in order to normalize the pressure, like, Fry just went to the toilet. Like, he didn't even know, but like, that makes total sense of how that could normalize the pressure. I just thought it was so funny and witty. Oh yeah, the horse scratch me. And I'm gonna go see if I can find a dandelion and a daffodil. Let's go up this way. This is so cute. I love the fact that there's so much water near me. In real life too, I guess. I live in Vancouver, British Columbia. The ocean is amazing. The Pacific Ocean, of course, 100% is much, 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 much. In my opinion, much better than the <laughs> um, Atlantic Ocean. And it is quite amazing. Also, daffodils and dandelions. Oh, here's a fishing spot. Can I do it? Um, can I hit it? Oh, sorry. Nice. Oh, perfect. So I guess I'll fish here for a while because I know it's easier to catch fish in the spots. But I do like Rick and Morty though, for sure. I haven't seen the new season. The uh, hour. Maybe I did. Maybe I saw half of it. The Pickle Rick season was the last season I was watched fully. And then, okay, I'm gonna get this chest. Just give me a second. No! God damn it! Why am I so bad at this? Uh, okay, maybe I'll just get the fish. So I didn't. But I think it's because, like, I read up. Like, I love the Evil Morty plotline. I thought it was amazing. But I thought the direction that they went with him was a little bit... I was a little disappointed, that's why. So that's, I, that's why I think I either didn't watch the newest season or just don't remember the newest season of Rick Morty. Although, I'm trying to think. The one... As much as I like... The family, Rick and Morty's family. I always found the plot lines with Beth really like. I don't think I really, I don't think I liked any of the plot lines with Beth in it. <laughs> okay, I can do it this time. Yes, finally. Oh my gosh. First treasure chest. Oh, that took so long. Another Jew. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. 
if it's still. I mean, it's already late. I can't even go get the geo, so might as well just go back and drop the fish off in the bucket. Ooh, no! Okay, I want that more scratch. I'm just gonna fish around my home for a bit. Yeah, I mean, I love cartoons actually. I love watching. It's one of the few things that could actually keep my attention. Some of my favorite cartoons geared towards an older audience. Well, I love Bob's Burgers so much. It's so funny. I honestly, I love Bob's Burgers. Oh, I'm getting so much garbage. What am I gonna do with this garbage without the recycling? Honestly, the characters are all just so funny. All of them. I don't think there's like a boring Bob's Burgers character. I love that everyone is just so over the top. I think a lot of it. Oh, I have more space. Let's see if I can fish more stuff. Um, I think. For a lot of the characters, they're like, at least the way I interpret it is that they're just such an exaggeration of like stereotypes. Like Louise, the rebellious child, Tina, the um, dork ish teenage girl that are like clearly going, through, that is clearly going through puberty. And it's yeah, no, I mean, I don't think a lot of Tina's hobbies are relatable, but it is kind of relatable. Like, I remember being that age for sure, and I also remember being Louise's age, not necessarily as rebellious as Louise is, but yeah. oh, I should go pick up that other horseradish if it's still there. I mean, buy more scenes. 